In the Old Testament, there was a promise. A promise to defeat our greatest enemy. And that enemy is death. In Isaiah 25 eight, God declared that he would swallow up death forever. But how was that going to happen? How was God going to defeat death? You see, the ancient Israelites were given the sacrificial system, and they were told that there was something special about the blood. They were told in Leviticus 17.11 that the life of the flesh, or the soul, was in the blood. And God went on to say that I have given it to upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. This was to teach the ancient Israelite that a life needed to pay for a life, or a soul for a soul. However, as we read in Hebrews 10, verse 4, that the blood of bulls and goats, the blood of animals, was not strong enough to remove our sin completely and free us from the power of death. In order for that to happen, God would require a perfect sacrifice. The sacrifice of someone who had never sinned. The sacrifice of someone who was completely innocent. And the sacrifice of someone who was willing to take our place. So the king of the universe the one of unparalleled power and unspeakable majesty, stepped down from his glory and became a man, Jesus of Nazareth, and allowed himself to be mocked, beaten, and spit upon, and then willingly went to the cross to lay his life down for our sins. Jesus then rose from the dead three days later and conquered death. And because of what Jesus did, God is now justified in forgiving our sins and granting us everlasting life as a free gift. You can't earn it. You can't pay for it. You can only receive it through repentance and faith. We must understand that our destiny as believers is to rule and reign with the creator of the universe in a physical, resurrected, glorified body for all eternity. And if we want to get a glimpse as to what these bodies will look like, then all we have to do is look at the resurrected body of the Lord Jesus. Because Philippians 3.21 says that God will transform our earthly bodies so that they will be like his glorious resurrected body. And when Jesus rose from the dead, he wasn't just a spirit, but he had a physical body. We see this in Luke 24.39, where Jesus said, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. Our destiny as believers is more glorious than we could ever imagine, but it's only possible because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. God bless you, and thank you for watching.